Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Allah in his khutbah tahajah 
Kulu Bidatan Dalala, Kulu Bidatan Kunar. Every bidda, newly invented matter in Islam is a going astray. And every going astray leads to the hellfire. That's the lafia of the bad. The people of innovation, bidda, they do not like to hear when the people of Sunnah recite this Qubbatahaza. It's like a dagger in their heart. Walalhamd, washuk, all of the praise and thanks belong to Allah and to Allah alone, those who He has endowed with a love of the Sunnah of Al Mustafa, Muhammad, who was chosen to convey the message. Walalhamd. And the point I would like to begin with from today's khutbah is that we need to be able to distinguish between innovation and the innovator. Many of us in our overzealousness or in our love of the sunnah, we tend to throw certain individuals under the bus by deeming them as the people of innovation, which is not necessarily the case. That at times there are, and we will come across individuals, Muslims, that are misguided. As such, we were misguided at one time, and we need guidance as we all need to share guidance with one another. <clears throat> But in terms of those people of innovation, those people who create and make up newly invented matters that are alien to the tariq, to the methodology of the Prophet Wasallam, as was understood by Sahab al Rasul Wasallam, Sahab al-Ikram, may Allah SWT be pleased with them. Those individuals, have been threatened by the fire. Those individuals have been threatened by the fire. And with that said, I would like to speak about one such ideology or mindset or thinking of those innovators, those people who choose to bring about newly invented understanding, protocol in the deen. Any of us who know about trades will understand that there's a protocol and there's a way to doing or carrying out your task as a person who is a new apprentice in the trades, Methalam. They teach you how to hold a hammer. And as a good apprentice, you will follow. And you will not argue. Because this is something which has come down from generations to generations. How to hold a hammer. So as people who profess that we are the people of the Sunnah, then that comes with teeth. Because of being a person of the Sunnah, we know that that key is something which will help us and open the key to Jannah. So with that said, <clears throat> there's a term and a clear behavioral trait that is consistent with the people who are innovators in the deen. And Allah Muhammad has described this in his book in the Quran by calling it the Shaykhi. Fa'l, the action of Shaykhi. And that has been described in many places in the Quran to describe an individual who has a mindset which is in opposition to the truth by way of their statement and their actions. And this sorry mindset 
is the state of the innovator who has been threatened by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the fire. And there are many examples of this mentality and the consequences thereof. But I'll be sharing one. Bulai Tawfi, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lies our success. In Surah Nisa, ayat number 115. Oh, Man huda wa yattabi ghayr sabil mu'mineen wa nuwalihi ma tuwalla nuslihi jahannam wa saad masira al ayat whosoever contradicts and opposes the messenger's sunnah after the right guidance has been made clear to that individual and they choose to take to tread a path other than the path of the people of Iman. Allah he says that we will leave them in the path that they have chosen. They will be beautified for them. That path that they have chosen will be made beautiful to them. And on top of that, they will burn in the hell. And what an evil destination. So where Allah says in his book, whosoever opposes the messenger وسلم, after having not known the correct path, after having not known or understood the correct sabil, the correct methodology of treading that path, and after becoming aware of the correct way, by way of books, methodology, and intentionally and deliberately and with full intent choose to stick to the path of misguidance. Allah just says, after being clarified, and on top of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala adds, as you can see, a cherry on top of the cake. What he said, as a wajal, should have been enough. But Allah wajal, to add further clarification by saying, whosoever follows a path which is in contradiction to the understanding of Ahsab Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah Taala will leave those people who choose, who choose to not follow the sunnah as understood by those individuals who were with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam during revelation, who stood by his side, who fought with him, who blood, who sweat, blood, sweat, and tears with the Prophet Witness revelation come down while he shivered in a cold night and sweat. The walihi matuwalla, munuslihi jahannam, wal sa'at masira. Al-ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will lead those people on the path that they have chosen and burn them in hell. So why should we feel sorry for people who choose not to follow the truth? Why should we? My dear Muslim, my man, we have to understand that those people who choose willingly, with full intent, are liars. They are kadhabin, balin. They are liars and they are astray. Zalamudil. They are not like the people who don't know the correct path. So those who are you consider shayqa, they have a mindset, they have a mentality which is deviant. So we, so as to protect ourselves, should not hang around with the people with such deviant mindset. We must avoid from those individuals. We must stay away from those individuals to the best of our ability. As soon as it becomes known that these people are in opposition to the truth, then we must stay away from them. And we must warn against them. Why? 
so as to protect ourselves and those whom we love. Those people who are ones who like to suggest that this is the way it should be understood in the deen, they are lying on the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We have to understand that those who lie on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they are saying and they are suggesting by bringing new things into the deen that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not convey the message. And there are many ayats and ahadith where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that the Prophet Islam was truthful in conveying the message. For example, in Surah Al-Ma'idah, verse number 67, Allah says, Ya ya Rasul, balig ma unzal ilayk min rabbik, fin lam tafa'al, fa ma balagta rasal. Al-Ayah, O you messenger, convey what has been sent down to you from your Lord. And what is the tafsir? What is the understanding of this verse? Aisha, she said that anyone who says that Muhammad did not convey the message is a liar. Because Allah says, Ya ayyur rusul. O Messenger, calling him by his, not his name, but his title. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Astafa Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa as the Messenger. And he told him to convey the message. And how foolish would it be to, to not hide the eye where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling them to convey the message. He conveyed the message in which Allah is ordering him to convey the message. So those who want to make up new things in the deen, they are the liars. And they are the ones who are threatened with the fire. There's a chapter in Sihil Bukhari titled Bab Ithil Man Kadaba Ala Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The chapter of those who lie on the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Narayat Abdullah bin Zubair that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had stated, Man Kadaba Alaya, for the Tabawul Mukhadu Min Al Nar. Whosoever lies upon me. And let them take their seat in the hellfire. So, my dear Salam and Iman, there is no need for us to argue with the people who want to be insistent and persistent on deviation. We must leave them alone and we must not argue with them because jidal, kusumat wa jidal, argumentation and, and debating is not a part of the deen. We do not argue and debate with the people who have ours a misunderstanding and deviation in the deen. But on the other hand, they have, we have within our, within our ranks, some misguided Muslims. Allah ya'adina wa yahum. Manas ta'ala guide us and them to the correct path. A simple example is that we know, coming here to this land of milk and honey, that many Muslims, they don't pray regularly. And they don't pray on time. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide them. And many of them, they don't go to Juma as such. And they say, or they claim that my work is ibadah. There's hope for these individuals because they are misguided as we were at one point in our lives. So when we reason with them, the 99.9% .9 of them, they will come to the correct understanding. And they will hold on to the correct understanding. And they feel guilty about creating this wrong understanding in the deen. But on the other hand, we have those misguided people, those extremist Shia, who will say that Jibreel, Khana Amana, the one who received the revelation from Rabbul Izza, the Lord of might and power, and brings it to the wrong person, Khana Amana, that he should have given the revelation to Ali, to the cousin of the Prophet And we have those people who call themselves Ahmadi. We have those people who are claiming to be Muslim. Ahmadi, who follow Mazir Ghulam Ahmed, Ghulam Ahmed. And we know him from Pakistan. He claims that he is a prophet after Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And a lot of other kedid. They claim to be Muslim, 
We will see they write La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. But they are not Muslim. So my dear Basalam Iman, let us not be fooled by those people who make slogans and they look and they appear to be from us. But we have to understand that Noble Sheikh does not tell me he said that we are not fearful from the outside Adu, the external enemies. We should be more fearful from the interior enemies who destroy Islam from within. They look like us, they speak like us, they dress like us, but they are not one of us. They are They are liars, and they are misleading the Ummah. So my dear brother, my man, we need to be careful. We need to be careful because the Prophet ﷺ, he conveyed the message. Aisha Radhanana said, whoever says that Muhammad did not convey the message and they are a liar. Because he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, standing up to his companions, asking them a question. Are you a nas? Oh people, you shall be asked about me. So what will you say? about me. What will you say? What will be your response regarding me? This is what the Prophet asked his companions. The Prophet turned to his companions and he asked them this. And his companions, they said, we bear witness. We bear witness. That you, we bear witness that you conveyed the message. You conveyed the message. And you conveyed it with the proper, in the most articulate of manners. And you gave us the most and genuine of sincerity of advice. The Master of Allah Sallallahu after hearing this, he said, Allahumma, Oh Allah, did I convey your message? Oh Allah, did I convey your message? While pointing at them and pointing up to the sky. Pointing at his companions and pointing up to the sky. My dear Prophet Salam Iman, today we have to understand that we have been blessed. We have been blessed to have the completion of the Rasal. As Allah just says in his book, in this ayat was revealed on Yom Al-Arafa, Al Yom. That day, the most auspicious day of the year and place, Allah says, This day I have perfected your way of life, your deen, and I have completed my favor upon you, and I have chosen Islam, submission as your way. Who and which one of us will be so foolish so as to choose our way or Mulana so and so or Sheikh so and so over the complete way of life of Al Mustafa? May Allah Taala help us to be one of those sincere followers of the Sunnah. Amen. The topic of today's khutbah was regarding the statement of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam I know and the people of the Sunnah they know make us, keep us as one of the people of the Sunnah the people of innovation they don't like this they don't like to hear this because the people of the Sunnah, they always ask, what is your dalil? Ma dalil? Give me your proof. Hatum burhanakum in kuntum sadaqeen. Give me your proof if you're speaking the truth. This is the way of the people of the Sunnah, as opposed to the people of the Bidat, or innovation. So, my dear Muslim and man, we have to understand those who choose to sternly stick to innovation, they are threatened. Those who shaqqa, 
Those who stubbornly stick to their innovation, they have been threatened with the hellfire. So my dear son and man, we don't want to be in opposition to the truth by our speech and our actions. My dear brother and man, no matter how learned the person may be, no matter how scholarly, no matter how pious the person may be, they are nothing compared to the Rasul Sallallahu and the Hasabi Ikram Rabbanu Majma'in. We should never ever put anyone above the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi and the understanding of his companions who were with him, who slept beside him, who fought beside him. We should never ever do that. If we are wise, then we won't do that. With that said, my dear Samuel Iman, I want to leave us with a story in closing on the authority of the great companion, Abdullah ibn Abbas, who narrated, we would come with Abdullah ibn Mas'ud to the masjid. And one day, Abu Musa al-Ash'ari came hurriedly, looking worried, and asked whether Abu Abdurrahman was had come out yet, meaning Ibn Mas'ud. We said no. At that time, we were sitting outside his home, waiting for him, which is the slow, which was the characteristic of the <coughs> Talabat al They would wait and sit for the scholar. At that time, he came out. And Abu Musa said, just now, coming from the masjid, I just saw a bidah. I just saw a bidah, but it looked so good. Ibn Mas'ud said, what did you see? Abu Musa said, I saw a group sitting in a circle, and they had maybe date stones or pebbles in their hand. And in every circle, a man would say, say takbir a hundred times. And they would say, Allah Akbar, a hundred times. In another circle, a man would say, say tahleel a hundred times. And throw the pebble in the circle, and they would say, Allah Akbar, a hundred times. In another circle, there would be a man in a group saying, say Allah Akbar, alhamdulillah. Say tasbih, alhamdulillah. Say tasbih, a hundred times. And they would say tasbih, a hundred times. Ibn Mas'ud, he asked him, Abu Musa al then what did you say to them? Abu Musa said, I did not say anything because I wanted to wait for you to see it for yourself. So when they arrived, while they were speaking and walking to the masjid, and they arrived, whilst they were walking, they observed their resuscitation in the circles. And Ibn Mas'ud asked one of the leaders in that circle, what is going on? They said we were just counting and making the dhikr of Allah with these pebbles. Ibn Mas'ud said, rather you should be counting your sins and I could be in witness, in surety, that you would lose nothing of your good deeds. He said, how quickly that you run to misguidance and deviation and know that the clothes of the Prophet Sallallahu are still available and his companions are still numerous. He said that his utensils are there, his companions are numerous, but how quick you run to believing that you are on a path which is better than the path of the Prophet Sallallahu The people said apologetically. They said apologetically, ma aradna illa khair. We did not intend anything except good. It was always said, how many people who intend good, but they never reach that good? So my dear Basam and Iman, I said that because living in this time, over 1400 years later, we have the breath of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We have the kutub, we have the books, so it's upon us to not be a blind follower of any sheikh, any imam, regardless of how pious he is. They can never be more pious than the Prophet Islam and his Ashab Akram. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on the shuhada, those who passed away in the Gaza Strip. 
Menasbatala help ease their suffering. Menasbatala have mercy on the widows and the orphans in the Gaza Strip. Menasbatala help our brothers and sisters who have been struggling for so many years in Kashmir. Menasbatala help our brothers and sisters who are struggling in 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 Sudan. In Burma, if you come and you are not in Allah will make you sure that Nabi, the one who is 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 the one